What's going on guys? So we are out here at the fifth wheel and we are gonna do a very interesting upgrade to the fifth wheel. And this is one that I actually had planned to do quite a while back and I just haven't been able to because the parts weren't in stock for a while. They finally got back in stock and I ordered them, got them in, definitely not gonna to wanna to miss this video because this is something a lot of people have asked about. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so unfortunately we have not taken the RV out for a few weeks now and we are really, really wanting to take it back out. And I figured this is a really good time to do this upgrade, just given the fact that, you know, it's sitting here, I have access to it, it's under a covered storage. Sure, it's 101 degrees outside and it's 113 degree heat index, but that's not gonna stop me today. I'll probably be a big old bowl of sweat by the time I'm done doing this, but it shouldn't take very long, thankfully. And what we are gonna be doing is a significant suspension enhancement to the RV without actually removing or replacing any components. You heard me right. This is going to be hopefully a relatively easy upgrade. Now I might need to lift the RV up. Not 100% sure. I'm going to see what I'm dealing with when I get underneath here first and then I'll make a determination on if I actually need to raise the RV higher at least from the suspension perspective drop the axles down slightly so I can do what I'm going to try to do. This is an interesting upgrade because again this is simply the addition of a product without having to remove or replace a product. All right, so in front of me is a product you may be familiar with, but if you are familiar with Super Springs, you're probably familiar with them as an add-on accessory to a pickup truck or an SUV to help increase your truck's level riding capabilities whenever you're under load. Basically, it acts as a bushing that you install under a leaf spring or in the rear end of your vehicle, or in some cases, even the front of your vehicle to reduce the amount of squat that your vehicle might be under whenever you have it loaded up, especially if you're gonna be hauling a very heavy trailer. But Sumo Spring now has a product designed specifically for trailers. And this product is designed to be installed in the back section above your axles. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox these and see what they're all about. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here. So we have the bushings or the springs and these springs will essentially mount, I believe in this orientation. We have a hardware mounting kit for each set. Now we need two sets because we have two axles. Then we have the instructions and these are spacers right here. So let's show you how this is all gonna look whenever we're done. So in essence, we're simply gonna mount a bracket to the top of the upper bracket for the leaf springs, the plate. It's going to essentially clamp in place, and then we are going to thread on whichever bushing we need. Now, the specific bushings that I got are designed for, I believe these specific ones are designed for up to 8,000 pounds, I believe five to 8,000 pounds. I'll put a link to eTrailer who provided these. They are my channel sponsor, and you can see specifically which ones you might need for your fifth wheel, travel trailer, cargo trailer, whatever application you need. Now, keep in mind, there are gonna be a different set for different types of spring configurations. So if you have an undermount spring where essentially your leaf springs are underneath your axle, you'll need a different kit, and it mounts differently. But because the axles are placed underneath the leaf pack on our fifth wheel, and a lot of newer fifth wheels and travel trailers, that's how they're set up, this is the kit that we would need. So, looks pretty simple, right? We're gonna get to installing these and uh, seeing how they work. Now, in this specific video, we're just gonna install them. And we're not actually gonna take the RV out yet. We will film this whenever we go out on our next camping trip. So, right now, again, this is just an installation video to show how it's done and to show you what they're designed to do and any challenges that I may encounter during the installation process. So hopefully it's very straightforward. I always love it when there's an installation that is just straightforward, that I don't run into any interesting issues because I'd probably say 60 to 70% of the time I run into some type of an interesting issue, whether or not it's a manufacturing issue from the part I'm installing, whether or not it's something I have to deal with with the RV, such as something placed in an area where I can't use a part I got, as you guys have probably seen in previous videos. But 
for the sake of this specific video, I hope everything's going to be super easy, super straightforward, and it's an upgrade that if you guys wanted to do on your own RVs, you'd be able to do very easily. So let's take a look at what is supposed to come in these accessory packs. This is going to be the one that I'm kind of interested to understand. Looks like we have some thread lock. We have some brackets, some spacers, washers, some bolts, and then we have the clamps right here. It's going to be two of these or a half each for each one of these bushings. Okay, so after looking at the instructions, it would appear as if these flat pieces of steel right here, and these are actually relocation brackets for your gas or utility lines. So on some RVs, you have a propane line that runs underneath your frame or alongside it, and these are essentially to space it away from your frame because if that's where the bushing has to make contact, you wanna make sure your propane line is out of the way and you're not pressing up against it. So that is pretty cool that they, they thought about this. It just shows that they put a lot of thought into making sure that this kit fits more than one type of RV, right? So you have basically what you need to get around those potential obstacles of getting it to work on various brands, various manufacturers, and various frames types so that's really cool this is what it's supposed to look like once it's installed you can see how the bushings are placed here above the top of the leaf springs let's just call them the sumo springs and then you can see how you have your factory set up right here the top mounting plate and then this clamps to it and essentially presses up against the frame section here where it's sandwiched between it so I may have to, again, lift up the back of the fifth wheel just enough to be able to squeeze this in and get it in place, but we'll definitely see. Hopefully not. I have the auto leveling system down currently, and with it in its lowered position, it takes some of that pressure off of the rear axles. So hopefully the space is there and I don't need to jack it up any higher than it is currently. Now let's quickly take a look at the instructions. So basically it says position the trailer on a level surface so the frame is parallel to the ground. Measure the current gap from the bottom of the frame to the top of the leaf spring plate. Do not raise the trailer for this step. Step two is set up the mounting bracket together with a combination of sumo springs and between zero and two spacers that will stack up to the height of one quarter to half inch taller than the measurement from step one. And they say that this is very important as the trailer sumo springs provide a maximum level of vibration reduction and dampening with this quarter inch to half inch preload. Okay, so I'm underneath the fifth wheel now. Here's my leaf spring pack. This is my axle, 8,000 pound axle. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Eh, that's kind of a spacer, but let's just say seven leaf springs here. You can see the bottom frame rail. Looks like there's a rock that got slung up there. But this is supposed to essentially mount on top of this plate right here and have about a half inch of preload on top of this. It's like one of my little spring clips here kind of came loose. So that is not a half inch. That looks like it's more about an inch. So I need to take this spacer out and I will have to lift up the RV, the frame at least, so I have the clearance I need to position these above here, screw this in place and give me the preload that I need to drop it back down. So yeah, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it would be, but it shouldn't be that difficult. But first I'm gonna take this spacer out right here and see if I have the right amount of preload that I'll, I'll need to properly install these. Okay, so I have all four of them assembled, ready to be installed on the leaf spring top plate. I just need to raise the fifth wheel up. Now, before you guys go jump in and do this, keep in mind it's very dangerous to lift an RV up, especially if you're by yourself. And the other thing you wanna keep in mind is you have to do it the right way, or you at least have to do it in a way that doesn't potentially damage the frame or damage a component or damage you. Okay, so if you guys don't recall, I had the little bracket in there installed by LCI. They sent a technician out to do that. Uh, that's why you see the paint dripping off of it. But for every negative, there's generally a positive, and for every positive, there's usually a negative. Uh, the negative is, is that I actually have to jack up the frame of the RV so I get the clearance I need, but that was kind of outlined in the instructions anyways because you need to preload these springs. Well, the positive is I have completely 
unobstructed frame rails from the bottom. So I don't have any propane lines, brake lines, nothing that's running right up against the top that I could interfere with. The actual brake lines don't run in that specific area considering these are disc brakes. So yeah, we'll be able to lift up the frame, hopefully about an inch and a half is all I'm really gonna need so I can slide these underneath and then drop it down on top. But I don't wanna lift it up any more than I have to. Okay, so because I only need to raise the back end or at least the frame above the axles by about, I'm gonna say about a half an inch, I'm gonna go ahead and use the auto leveling system to do it. Now I never recommend using your auto leveling system to actually take all the weight off your wheels because it's just not designed for that. I know a lot of people do it and a lot of people use it to change tires, things like that. But again, they just don't design it for that. It's not necessarily its intended purpose. So I definitely want to abide by what LCI says because they make the system and they know what's best for it. But I am gonna use it just to raise the back end up a hair. Now I gotta be careful because if you look at this jack leg over here, it's extended pretty far and I don't want to overstroke the leg. Basically you run into a scenario where you can't go up anymore and it kind of goes into a bit of an error mode. I am going to go to manual mode. Hit enter. Now I am going to hit the plus sign. It's going to open up the app to do this. Now I can raise the right and the rear and I want to raise the rear up a little bit. Okay, so do I have the room I need to slide this in place? Not, not quite, I'm pretty close. I'd say I need to go up another, maybe half an inch, I don't know. All right, so I had a couple issues here. I can't auto level the unit because it went into an error mode. So I actually have to retract all the legs and then do an auto level again. So I'm gonna have to hitch it up to the truck so I can retract the legs. Yeah, some of these projects just don't work out and I'll tell you what's wrong. All right, so here is the Sumo Spring. Very cool design. What do you think the issue is? The issue is this piece right here doesn't go wide enough because of the slot and because of this bolt length to actually go around the top plate of the leaf spring. It's short by about half an inch. So even if I had lifted the fifth wheel high enough, this wouldn't have mounted around it. Now I'm gonna get in touch with the folks at eTrailer and at Sumo Springs to let them know that they have an 8,000 pound rated Sumo Spring, but because this bracket right here is too narrow to fit on top of that top plate, essentially the piece above the leaf spring, you can't actually mount it. And this could be a really big concern because you might take your RV in, they get it off the ground, they do everything they need to do thinking they can install these, but because of the specific setup you have, it doesn't work. Now, I don't know if this is gonna fit on a slightly smaller leaf pack. I assume it would um, because they do have videos of it. I'm pretty sure it would fit on just about any travel trailer. But if you have 8,000 pound axles and you have the larger leaf pack, uh, this may not fit. So it does not fit on my RV. It's another one of those projects. I think I have three of them now where I've had to essentially abort the project because of some type of an issue. The first one was with the door and the uh, Glow Step Revolution, the Gen 2 version, because of this fender trimming right here. And they're still working on some type of a fix for that. Second one was with the Mori, that little sliding tray that I tried to install in the front. And the third one now is the Sumo Spring setup. And this one is a manufacturing issue where they don't have brackets that are wide enough to fit around the top of the leaf spring bracket. Anyways, I gotta hitch the truck up, retract all my gear, and level it back out because it's all in an error mode right now and that's the problem. Guys, I'll put a link in the description of this video if this is something you wanna add to your fifth wheel or travel trailer or whatever type of trailer you have. Um, just be careful, do a lot of research, find out if your top plate's gonna be too wide. That's definitely a measurement that they should start including, but yeah, it's what's preventing me from installing them. Big bummer, big bummer. I'm gonna reach out to them and see if we can get that fixed. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.